This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader of online cybersecurity education. Join more than 10,000 professionals from over 120 countries to learn security online. I am Damien from Pentester Academy TV, and I want to welcome you to another episode of The Toolbox, where we showcase the latest and greatest open source tools. Add them to your collection today. Let's take a look at Sharpener by Arnik. So hi, uh, my name is uh, Mahmoudi Fakhrou and today I'm going to present uh, or showcase on how, on the topic defeating EDR with Sharpener with the recent tool I just released. So this tool actually, uh, what, what it's all about is actually is on, more on obfuscating and creating also implementing direct syscalls. So who am I? Uh, I'm a university student majoring in internet security and also play CTF and boot group. Also, I do play uh, some of uh, Fantasy Academy uh, platform, CTF. And so I'm still unemployed. So I, of course, I play games every day. Uh, aside of from doing tools, when, when I'm bored, I, I just develop tools. For example, this uh, Sharpener. So what is Sharpener? Sharpener is actually, a, 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 I can call it a payload creation framework that uh, implement direct syscall, also de-invoke, and also uh, it can generate in various uh, format. For example, I just re recently added DLL. Uh, other than DLL is uh, .NET and also PE dropper. Okay, so this is uh, the help panel for Sharpener. So let's move on. Uh, what do I target for Sharpener? What is my main goals? Uh, to achieve uh, when I uh, develop Sharpener. So the first one is actually I want to bypass uh, signature scans from uh, of uh, Microsoft Defender and also most uh, AV vendors. For example, uh, most of the PE binary or any executables uh, can be easily detected by signature. For, uh, for example, the use of function names. So Sharpener, uh, how can Sharpener bypass this is by randomizing uh, all the function names and and also the function logic. And also, uh, second goal is I, uh, I want to bypass uh, heuristic scan uh, also or also EDR by implementing direct syscall and also manual mapping uh, in the invoke library. I will I will explain more on this later. And also the. Second last one is stay updated and also I always keep on changing code logic because recently uh, when I push this into the public then of course uh, people will start uh, pushing it to various people and everything and and this started to 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 detect my my most code function so uh, I I uh, frequently edit and update my code logic to avoid signature detection and of course I want to stay as stealth as uh, possible so uh, I'm going to give a uh, what is actually Sharpen is all about uh, like I said before it's more on obfuscation and encryption and then the, uh, it implements direct syscall and also it will generate the final value so why do we actually why why do we need to obfuscate on crypt shell code? Uh, of course, we want to bypass uh, uh, AV scan for uh, because if we directly copy like for example B sixty four from uh, MSF Venom, uh, Microsoft has uh, this uh, this signature called Metaprinter, and every if it is just simply basic for uh, encoded then it will just directly detect it says with the printer payload so I just uh, I just do multiple layers of obfuscation and also in, uh, encryption on my shell code so like this, uh, you see on the screen is uh, for example the original tag is enemy and the encrypted text in AES is actually a bunch of bytes unreadable bytes Okay, so uh, what does actually Sharpener do in the background to encrypt the raw uh, payload or shell code? Sorry. So uh, the first layer is actually uh, it does 
AES encrypt and it, it actually accept uh, various format of shellcode, uh, raw shellcode and also uh, can accept B64 shellcode and also health shellcode and also uh, and then after that it encrypts with uh, symmetric AES encryption logic and then after that it will do ZOR authentication and after ZOR I will further uh, go because ZOR is not ZOR is not in string form is in byte form so uh, I need to convert it to base 64 uh, basic base 64 and then uh, base 64 some of the uh, AV vendors still can detect uh, when the base 64 is too long then uh, they, it can be suspicious so I further translated my base 64 uh, into custom Morse code like you said uh, in the in the diagram uh, below Okay, uh, and after I implement uh, the most code and can bug price uh, most of the AV vendors. And then, uh, why do I even bother to add direct C score? Because uh, most people uh, in the industry always uh, say that uh, signature scan is not enough. Uh, I mean, you can possibly bypass. Uh, I mean, you can actually download the payload uh, onto the disk without actually being detected. So you you have bypassed the signature scan. But once you have executed the payload, EDR can actually uh, do its stuff and know the behavior, behavioral uh, behavior scan, behavior detection, and it can easily kill the payload. So what is Direct Secure? Direct Secure is actually a bunch of uh, undocumented Windows API uh, that can interact directly into uh, the kernel mode because EDR are just uh, most of the EDR are just uh, hooking API calls in the user mode. So instead of uh, using the user mode API call, we go we implement the undocumented Windows API that is directly interact with the kernel mode. Uh, for example virtual a lot api call uh, this function is actually to to uh, allocate memory space in the memory and and then i i uh, substitute it with anti allocate virtual memory so it does the same function but different uh, api call okay so this is the diagram actually on the uh, windows OSS architecture as you can see, uh, the top one is the user mode and the below one is the kernel mode. Every API call, uh, Windows, uh, as you can see, Win32 API call will uh, interact with ntdll.dll. So this part is where EDR will hook. And on the right one is actually, uh, for example, uh, it calls um, uh, NT write file API call. And this is uh, the API call. Uh, it close to the kernel mode, so EDR mostly would uh, would uh, hook this uh, syscall, direct syscall. So uh, I, this is one of the code snippet that I screenshot from uh, Alaris, Alaris uh, tool. So you can see that it implements direct syscall. Like I said before, this uh, this line anti allocate virtual memory, and it called anti write virtual memory, anti queue APC thread, and anti resume thread. So we can see that you can easily identify uh, direct syscall is actually all the anti function. We uh, most of people call it anti functions. So uh, let's move on. You can read uh, if if I'm going to explain more on syscall, it's going to be a, a very very long presentation so uh, let's move on on to the native C++ payload that Sharpener can generate so uh, I've created this diagram so first uh, what the PE payload does is it decrypts the shellcode uh, and then after uh, the shellcode has been de uh, decrypted and it does PPID spoofing what is actually PPID spoofing PPID spoofing is actually, uh, for example, if I create a process, uh, a call, uh, this is actually a decoy process. Create a decoy process called explorer.exe, and I take that PID 
and I create another malicious process under mopsing.exe so uh, when I create this mopsing.exe I injected my shellcode in mopsing.exe and spawn under the parent process the decoy process explorer.exe just now so it becomes a char process so this is our PPID scoping and then uh, I allocate memory space for shellcode uh, and for, by using API call and allocate virtual memory and then uh, I just uh, write the shellcode into the allocated memory space before using the NT write virtual memory direction call and I queue the APC thread and, and I resume the suspended thread for, and I, will, I will explain this more on the demo part and this is uh, just the recent one I did because uh, I forgot to include the diagram uh, AV vendors or, also, or maybe uh, Microsoft Defender most likely ignore DLL payload they just focus on detecting EXE, HTA, VBA, VBS to SPM and everything but DLL most, uh, I, I just tried DLL uh, and it works uh, pretty well and Defender just ignore the LL just like that uh, so I I use uh, this this is called lolbin uh, I use MSI exact export call to execute this DLL payload the export call is actually called DLL unregistered server and I use this as entry point in my DLL payload so you can see on this part I execute my DLL with MSI exact also you can just use the uh, run DLL to uh, execute the payload but I prefer it to use uh, through MSI exact because this is uh, signed binary and I do the same I decrypt the shellcode and I allocate uh, memory space for shellcode uh, with uh, read and write permission without the execute permission first and then I write shellcode into the allocated memory space and I uh, change permission page to uh, I, I, I added execute permission and then I create a remote thread which will execute uh, the the shellcode in the mem in the memory so bonus uh, on this sharpener tool I recently added the convert functionality the convert flag so what is actually convert do this uh, I implement manual mapping uh, in the invoke uh, .NET library uh, the idea is actually like this I uh, most of the people don't prefer .NET instead of PE file so I converted PE into .NET using convert method and then uh, I implement manual mapping uh, I'm going to explain uh, what is uh, what is actually manual mapping so manual mapping is uh, is uh, making a fresh copy of ntdll just now ntdll.dll any modules that is going to be uh, used by this pe file it will grab that uh, it will create a fresh copy of ntdll.dll and it will manually map the dll and the PE dropper will just interact with the fresh copy that we just did so it will not, it will not uh, interact with the system NTDLL because EDR will hook between that the uh, system NTDLL or also interaction between PE and NTDLL so we create a new copy of the NTDLL and interact uh, with the copy you just did in, in memory without touching this so why do I even implement this? I uh, I want to load assembly reflectively uh, using the execute assembly. For example, in in uh, in Cobalt Strike, you can use execute assembly function, which will you can you can load assembly reflectively. And of course, uh, obsessive, we want to always uh, execute payload uh, from memory without even touching the disk. Uh, so before I move on to to the demo part, I'm going to give uh, credits to Outflanks on article, great great article on Direct Cisco, and also Sharpsploit.net library and Alaris 
that helped me a lot and also my friends that uh, helped me throughout the project. So I guess we can move to uh, my demo part. So uh, just create a simple payload uh, for using MSF Venom. I create a payload that will spawn calculator. So I just create in base C4. So I can copy this payload. This payload I can confirm 100% if you just copy directly into the payload, it will get detected by antivirus. And let's create a file called file.base64 or I can do call.base64. Let's paste the share code in. And if I call, yeah, okay, uh, by the way, if you can see uh, on the right side, I, I turn on the uh, real time protection, the uh, AV, just to prove that I, I did not play the D. <laughs> okay, uh, so you can see that you can do the sharpener and call the shell code file. And you can use, uh, you can uh, generate in C++, uh, C Sharp payload or DLL. So in this, um, in this demo, I'm going to uh, call that basic support as well. And I'm going to uh, do the C++ payload. I hope it works. It works just now. Okay, you can see that it now uh, uh, generate release.exe. This is a PE file. So I can prove that if I scan with Windows Defender, no current track. So it, uh, it's quite fast, uh, the first one. But uh, some of the AV vendors still detect detect this, but we can we can try to execute release. It's one uh, cal calculator. Okay, so uh, if I scan with uh, uh, online scanner, AV scanner, re, uh, this PE file, we just uh, some of them still detects this PE dropper. And then that's what got me to create another functionality, this convert function that will convert this PE into .NET file and also implement manual mapping. Uh, so you can do release.exe It will convert uh, will embed the release.exe into a new file called deinvoke release.exe and I can scan it one more time see uh, no current tracks on Windows Defender and we can call we can try to execute the invoke. Uh, this uh, will take uh, quite some time because it is currently manually mapping the NTDLL. Okay, so we can see that uh, calculator is part. So I guess uh, that is all from my demo. Yep. Thank you, Anik, for your presentation and demo that you have presented earlier you know uh, I do have a few questions before we end off the sessions um, I think uh, one of the questions I think is a personal question from me uh, you showed you you say that you can bypass the online you know AV antivirus will you be able to showcase that because I, I think probably you might miss out during your oh sure sure uh, I, can, I can do that I will share my screen first okay thank you Okay, uh, I normally use this uh, site called uh, antiscan.me uh, because uh, people advise me to do so to scan here instead of just to directly to virus filter. So, uh, previously generated file called the invoke release, uh, I'll try to create another file called uh, just take the previous calculator with the share code. And I will try to create various uh, payload. See, the C sharp payload already got detected. Before uh, it was fine, and now you can see that uh, it said it's now track found, so it will be deleted from my computer. Let's see if I can take. 
sih si uh, uh, .NET payload is now uh, being detected by antivirus so we got deleted it's okay we move on to uh, C++ payload second okay c++ called config.exe actually sharpen we just randomize uh, legit look look like a uh, name config release and everything and so on so if i try to scan this config.exe this uh, one second There, there's three, uh, still three uh, AV vendors that can still detect it as malware, as Trojan downloader, and also Windows 10 Defender also detect uh, this as meshes. So uh, I'm quite sensitive when Windows 10 Defender detect uh, my payload. So I added uh, another function called convert just now like, like I did. So I just convert this config.exe. So I've convert this using Sharpsploit module and the file is called the invoke config. Let's try to upload it once again. So you can see that it is now zero clean. So no uh, antivirus can now uh, uh, detect at this point who knows they will detect in the future but for now it's working fine if i try to execute this and it will still spawn a calculator yep that's working fine so uh, i guess that answers your question okay uh you know thank thank you thank you for the demonstration you, you just helped me to uh my curiosity <laughs> uh, <laughs> with regards to the, the, the AV online uh, demonstrations and stuff like that. Thank you for also loading a different kind of all the different files, you know, to showcase uh, what what uh, what all your, your tools has been creating, you know, what can be detected, what cannot be detected um, is uh, awesome, you know. And uh, my next question for you, you know, uh, what inspired you in creating this tool, you know? Why? <laughs> uh, I... You know, uh, I'm still unemployed, so I'm a student. I uh, what I uh, what I do during my free time is I play lab. I play uh, 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 Box Pro Labs, any AD AD Pro Lab uh, or AD environment lab. I just took the, uh, my recent course uh, CRTE from Prentice Academy. So uh, in uh, AV evasion is is somehow in, in the scope I need to do. So uh, after I finished the course and I got even more curious, how can actually I, uh, I cannot find any, any source in, in the internet, any, any tools because some people hide their tools for their own use. They do not, they're not uh, exposed uh, to the public or released to public. So I create my own tool. And, and I implement uh, uh, a bit by bit for a direct Cisco menu mapping and obfuscation encryption and everything. It took me like uh, one month. So I think I, I, I achieved my goal to, to try to, actually my, my main objective of creating this tool, I, I do not want to have a hard time doing labs doing labs, GTF and everything because I hate seeing that uh, your your file has been detected by virus, uh, it, it contains virus and everything, so I create my own tool. So now I can do any lab uh, using this tool, yep. Instead okay. of using just um, MSF Venom uh, or Metasploit, yep. Okay, okay. I, I think, you know, everybody is uh, inspired in doing their own thing and I'm yeah. moving forward. <laughs> To, to to achieve a better thing, you know. Uh, and I uh, did mention about, you know, some, some people keep their tools. You keep it very open. It's an open source tool for people to, to explore and uh, to use it, uh, which 
which caught my attention <laughs> that, yeah. uh, that I reached out to you. Um, you know, as you build this tool, you have been building it bit by bit. Are there any expect in the tools would you like the community to contribute to? Because it's an open source tool. Definitely, definitely. Uh, in, I, before this presentation, I, I, I was actually quite nervous to, uh, to, to, to showcase this to the public because I, I might have some bit in my presentation or in what, what I explained actually it's not right or it's, uh, it's not it's not exactly what uh, what it should uh, be explained and and uh, I in this tool I actually would like people or community to contribute on on doing the EDR bypass on how what is the correct way or correct method to implement a direct Cisco I just what I did was uh, I referred to just a blog post. Maybe there are a bunch of the ways that you can implement, and also a uh, bunch of other ways you can obfuscate or encrypt shell code, uh, a more efficient way instead of just law, AS, and everything. So uh, I would, uh, my main uh, thing that I would like people to contribute is on the direct syscall part, and also manual mapping. More on the when it comes to play, uh, playing with the memory, and I'm not confident. I need more people to contribute to this tool and make this uh, better in EDR, EDR version or EDR bypass. Yep. Okay. Is it? Now, um, uh, for for myself, uh, I would like to thank you for stepping out. You know, being a university student, stepping out from from your comfort zone to present uh, to, to the broader audience, you know, um, nothing is perfect. Uh, that's why the community is here to help and stuff like that. But it is always new talents or new blood from, from uh, that's coming into the cybersecurity, you know, to share about uh, your own analogy, your ideology. And that's where we are more than happy to help, you know, whether the tool is good or bad. Um, this is where Toolbox is. We want to give people a platform to present their own tools so that community can help to better the tools itself. And I think, uh, thank you for coming on board to, to our show, you know, to showcase your tools. Thank uh, you to you guys too for <laughs> inviting. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you, you know, uh, to present this tool. And we do hope that the community can um, feedback to you to give you more um ideas uh, that you requested and um, yeah and more people more two authors will be more young two authors are more inspired like you you know to come forward to present their tools uh, to to groom themselves you know for for better yeah hopefully and, hopefully yeah. Yeah, thank you, Anik, for your time, you know, for the whole presentations and the demo and going through the Q&A session with Pentex Academy TV. Uh, we do hope to see you soon with another exciting tool, probably in the future, uh, that we can feature again. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anik, once again for coming on board to this episode of The Toolbox. For more information on the tools, do see our description below. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to the next episode of The Toolbox.